What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I'm testing out a nail art hack for you. So I'm sure by now most of you have heard of this TikTok trend where you can create French tips on your nails using a jelly stamper. If you haven't, it's exactly what it sounds like. Basically people are applying gel polish onto a clear jelly stamper, sticking their nail in it, and then it supposedly creates the perfect French tip. And I know that this trend has actually been around for months now. I still hadn't tried it, but I was really curious to try it because one, I have short nails and I feel like I haven't seen anybody do it with short nails before and two this is something that I would want to do with regular polish and I almost exclusively see it in gel polish form so I figured it was worth testing out doing a little video for you guys I'm sure a lot of you have short nails and prefer regular polish over gel as well so I thought it would be a fun little experiment so before we dive in let's talk about the products that you'll need obviously the most important thing is to get a jelly stamper I'm using a really old one from maniology this is actually branded from back when it used to be called Bundle Monster. I have seen videos of people using clear jelly stampers and it's ripped from the force of pressing their nail into it. So I didn't want to use my good stamper. So I decided to go with this one. It's still a good one, but I just wanted to use one that I wouldn't mind if it broke. Of course, you're also going to need nail polish. For this, I'm using Holo Taco Not Milky White, just because we're doing classic French manicure colors here. But obviously you can use any color or finish that you want. It does not have to be a solid cream finish. You can definitely do this with shimmer or even hollow or something like that as well. You just want to make sure that you're using a relatively opaque polish. And then the third and final thing that you will need is some acetone. If you have short nails like me, there's definitely a lot of cleanup involved. I've seen a lot of people do this on long nails and it does not get on their skin at all. But considering that my nails only barely go past my skin, I knew that it was going to be a relatively messy journey. So I am going to be using pure acetone and a cleanup brush from Katie Shimmer. You can use liquid latex if you want to, but I just felt like that was going to take too long and this is supposed to be a hack that makes things go quicker and I just don't love the wait time of waiting for liquid latex to dry, so I just dove right in without it. So yeah, onto the logistics of how I'm going to do it. Super simple, basically just going to paint a stripe of polish onto my stamper. I'm going to put it at an angle and then I'm going to stick my nail into it. Since it's a squishy stamper, it does have a lot of give, so I should be able to theoretically push my nail in as far as I need to in order to create a nice French tip. So yeah, let me just show you guys the process of how it went. So roll the footage. So I'm not going to do any prep or base coat on my nails just because I wasn't sure if I was going to have to do any cleanup around that tip. So I just put on my polish onto the ice cube stamper, put my nail at an angle, and then I pressed into it. And as you can see, the polish had already started to dry on the stamper. That's what that little extra piece is. The line looked nice, but it wasn't very clean. There was like this weird amount where it had started started to dry too quickly. So I figured it looked good from far away, but once you saw that kind of line of where the polish was already drying, it wasn't ideal. So this is what my stamper looked like. The polish had already pretty much completely dried on there. It dries super fast once you put it on the stamper. So I just took some scotch tape and I peeled that off. That's the easiest way to clean your stamper and that is how I'm going to do it throughout the video. But I just dove right into the next nail. So I applied more of that white polish. I lined my nail up with it and then I just pressed my nail into it and this time I tried to go a little bit faster. As you can see it still did start drying a little bit too fast. There was still a tiny bit of extra on my nail. The line was cleaner but it still wasn't as clean as it could be and you can see the polish on the stamper started to create this like webbing. As it was drying it was pooling together really weirdly so I knew I was gonna have to work supremely fast for this trick. That's probably why it's so much easier to do with gels because with regular polish, it dries really fast and it pools together. So I thought maybe I should try with a thinner layer of polish on the stamper. I was a little bit off camera here. I'm not sure if you guys could see, but basically that thin coat started pooling and webbing way quicker. So that definitely wasn't the way to go. You have to work with a thicker layer rather than thinner. So I cleaned that off and I went back in with a slightly thicker layer here. And as you can see, it doesn't pool as quickly once it's thicker. So I tried to go really fast with my ring finger here. Press that in. As you can see, my smile line isn't terribly even, so I really wanted to cover that up, and I think I was a little too shaky because even though it looks nice from far away, I feel like the line isn't as smooth and perfect. 
effect, but it didn't give me that weird effect that the other two nails had where that line was a little fuzzy because of already dried polish. So we're already getting a little bit better. So by the last nail, I was already getting a little bit more comfortable with the trick and I ended up working pretty quickly and I think it turned out pretty nice. It still started to dry really quickly, but I think the line itself ended up being totally fine. So I was pretty satisfied with the manicure. I figured I would start to do a little bit of cleanup and see how it looked with top coat. It definitely did make a mess, especially on the underside of my nail. So I had to clean that off with my acetone as well. And then it did start to climb up that free side of my nail. And I was really having a hard time getting that clean. Clean. Even when I was using my acetone on there, it kind of just like sunk into like porous bits of my nail, which definitely wasn't ideal, but I feel like from far away, it's not that noticeable and maybe with a little bit of moisturizing that would help. So I just went in with my top coat and it ended up looking like a pretty good manicure. I think from far away, you wouldn't be able to tell that this was any worse than usual. In fact, I think it ended up being pretty good. I feel like I could get a similar looking manicure using the French tip guides. Like I said, the first two, the line wasn't as crisp. And I also noticed that it didn't perfectly cover up my smile lines. So the free edge of my nail where the tip of the nail is naturally white, I don't have the most even or similar smile lines on every single nail. It's not really something you notice until you do something like this where over the naked nail, you can kind of see, especially on my index finger, you can kind of see on the edges. Some of that smile line is still visible, but I think it ended up pretty good for a first attempt. So I decided I wanted to redeem myself with those first two nails now that I kind of had the hang of it. So I went back in and I decided to try again and I was pretty pleased. This time I went a little bit further up on the index nail so you could see I didn't have any of that smile line visible on the nail. Did the same thing with that middle nail but it was a shorter smile line so that one was a little bit shorter. At this point since I was pretty comfortable with the technique I decided to mess around and try doing different colors and patterns. So I took a couple of OPI polishes from their new collection and I decided to draw out some stripes and see if I could stamp those on. And as you can see, I don't know if it's the OPI formula because it's very thin. It started to really pull together and do that webbing before I got finished with actually applying it onto the stamper. So I tried working as quickly as possible. There was a little fuzz on my nail. I probably should have grabbed that beforehand because it did pull a little bit there, but it actually didn't end up looking terrible. Obviously it didn't turn out how I expected it to, but I feel like with a little bit more practice, it could be really cool. I tried to simplify it a little bit and just do two stripes and see if I could maybe do like a little sort of blend in there. I think the OPI formula was maybe not ideal to use for this because as you could see, it was just going so quickly that it really wasn't working for me. So once I applied that, I thought it did kind of create a cool little gradient there. Definitely some cleanup required on that tip, but I think it's kind of a cool attempt, but I figured I would save that maybe for a different video in the future. So I decided to go in with a nude polish and try one final time. Now that I knew what I was doing with those French tips, I wanted to do something that was foolproof. So if I have a nude base on, you won't see my free edge and I can have a little bit more of a consistent line on each nail. So the first nail turned out absolutely perfect. The second nail, at first I didn't press far enough in and I was worried that that was gonna ruin the whole manicure, but I ended up just pushing in a little bit further and it ended up looking really nice and it was pretty even and consistent. So I just moved on to the next nail. For some reason, the ring finger was the hardest for me to get a nice clean line on. I'm not sure why, that's actually the nail that I use for my swatches. So I feel like that should have been the easiest nail for me to work with, but for some reason I was just having a hard time with it. I do think it ended up looking fine though. Just cleaning off my stamper as I did in between each one. You don't want to reuse the same polish because it dries really fast like I said. But then I just finished that off with my pinky nail and I think that one ended up being pretty good as well. Maybe a little bit lopsided but overall I think it ended up looking pretty nice. So clearly there was a lot of cleanup for me to do. At this point my cuticles were pretty ravaged. A lot of acetone and doing cleanup and having white polish 
polish. Getting stuck in the little porous bits of my nail was definitely not ideal, but I wanted to put my top coat on, let it dry for a little bit, let my nails soak in some cuticle oil so I could get a little bit of healing. And then I was left with the final manicure, which looked like this. And I have to be honest, I think this turned out looking really nice. So I was really impressed. I'm not sure that it necessarily was quicker than doing any other kind of French manicure trick, but I do think that it ends up looking really nice and it's definitely easier. You don't need to have any level of freehand nail art skill. You don't have to work too quickly. You don't have to work as quickly as you would have to with striping tape or a French tip guide. So in that respect, I really enjoyed it. But let's talk a little bit more about my thoughts on the process. Back to regular Kelly. <laughs> so overall, I have to say, I think it went pretty well. I wasn't expecting this hack to not work. I figured since so many people are doing it, it definitely has to work. It did take a little bit of practice to get it right though. I think my first couple, although they looked all right, there were still some mistakes that were done. I think the hardest thing for me was figuring out how to make the line the same width on all of my nails because you can't see the nail as you're pushing in. You kind of lose sight of it. So it becomes hard to know how much is already under the polish, if that makes any sense. But I think it got easier. The more I did it, the more I got used to the feeling and I was able to kind of accurately guess where I was. It was also fun to test out playing with patterns. I've seen a lot of people do this with gels and I wasn't sure it was gonna work with nail polish. Obviously my attempts were not perfect, but I feel like if I master the technique, I think I would be able to do some cool nail art using regular polish and using this hack. So if you guys are interested in a part two video where I try doing like designs on the French tip, can do that, that could be a fun time. Definitely cool to know that I could potentially do it as long as I'm working fast enough. I think my biggest issue with this hack is how much of a mess it makes. When you're working with longer nails and the jelly stamper isn't actually touching your skin, it's gonna be a much easier process because you don't have to clean up your skin. So because I have the added difficulty of having short nails, I also had to do cleanup, which made the technique a little bit less quick, a little bit less easy. And because I was attempting it so many times, I really ravaged my cuticles. So I think in the future, what I would do is probably use liquid latex or even scotch tape just to have that underneath my nail so that there's less cleanup required. But I do have to say, I think the final French manicure that I did is possibly my best French manicure to date. And I do think that it was easier than using guides. One other technique that I like to do a lot for French manicures, I have a video on it, but basically just applying the line sloppily and then cleaning it with acetone. I find that to be the easiest way. For me, when I do a French manicure that has a color underneath, I find it to be a little annoying that I have to apply my top coat, let it dry fully, and then hope that using a little guide or striping tape on my nail isn't going to ruin the base color underneath. So for that, I felt that was incredible that I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to apply top coat or anything like that until the manicure was fully done. So I definitely liked that aspect. And I do think that the lines came out looking really nice and neat. So it is a technique that I'm definitely going to be doing again. But I'm curious to hear from you guys. Have you tried this technique? Are you into it? Have you used it with gel polishes or regular polishes? And also, are your nails long or short? And has that made a difference as to how you did it? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me do any more nail art hacks, you can definitely let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Huge shout out to my Cosmic Admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Braxton Scott, and Rocket Man's daughter. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Eve and Eve wants to know, what's your favorite board or card game? I don't know if I've actually told you guys this, but ever since Ryan and I both started working from home in the beginning of 2020, we have actually been playing card games every day at lunch together. That's just like our little lunch break thing that we do together. And for the last, I want to say, year and a half. We play Crazy Eights every day. I had never played it before and it is simultaneously the most fun and the most infuriating game of all time. We really like get heated and into it, but it's definitely a lot of fun. We don't like keep track of how many wins anybody has or anything. We just play for fun and then we tease each other about it. But I don't know if I would say it's my favorite, but it's definitely my favorite thing that we do. It's like our little activity together during the day. We used to play Gin, and I actually think that might be my favorite card game, but I think 
that like took a little bit like too much and I needed something like really simple and easy because we don't have that much time in the middle of the day to play games. That's just a fun little thing that we do. But let me think, is there any board games that I love? I'm actually a big fan of puzzles. I haven't played a board game in a really long time though. But yeah, you can also let me know your faves in the comments below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.